We're at a Quedo in Abidjan and a new day's work is about to begin. In one of the world's poorest countries, this is how many people earn their living, picking through the rubbish, looking for anything at all they can sell, even scraps of plastic. Thousands of people live and work around this site in Ivory Coast's largest city. And yet, this is where toxic waste from a rich Western company was illegally dumped. That's why they say around here that instead of bringing them wealth and opportunity, the company Trafigura brought them nothing but disaster. We can now reveal just what was really dumped here. The company has always claimed the waste was harmless. But our investigation shows that it was highly toxic, endangering the health of tens of thousands of people. Trafigura could have safely disposed of the waste in Europe. Instead, they shipped it to Africa. I'm just around the corner from the Aquedo tip and I've come to meet Jean-Francois Quadio. Apparently, he's lost both his babies because of the toxic waste. His wife, Fidel, had been eight months pregnant with their first child when a wave of noxious fumes engulfed their home. Doctors say this caused her to give birth prematurely. The boy, Jean-Claude, died within a day. My wife, when they dumped the toxic waste, we went to the hospital in Tuka and they asked us to get checked. Their second child, Amma Grace, was born a year later. She too fell ill and was taken to hospital. The team put a needle in her spine and they drew out some bone marrow to analyse it. Then they said that she was suffering from acute glycemia caused by the toxic waste. Amma Grace died last December. These medical reports say there is a strong presumption that her death was also caused by exposure to the toxic waste. The couple fear they may never become parents. The waste that's blighted Ivory Coast's commercial capital belonged to the giant mineral trading company Trafigura. It was shipped to West Africa against international regulations that aim to spare developing countries from Western waste. A tanker chartered by Trafigura docked here at Abidjan. On board were several hundred tonnes of the foul-smelling waste. It was collected in darkness by a convoy of trucks and then tipped all around the city. As the powerful stench brought people out into the streets, the drivers were forced to look beyond Abidjan. Some of the toxic waste was dumped here, right by the village of Jibi. It got into the water supply, killing all the fish that fed the villagers. Every last person here, 2,000 of them fell ill. Three died, and they blame it all on Trafigura's waste. The head of the village, S.A. Motto, showed me what's left of the fish farm. It's had to be abandoned and remains contaminated. We started to smell something unusual, a strong odor like a gas leak, and it was very difficult to breathe. And so when all this happened, people started getting sick. And then there were women who miscarried, and that was very painful. But still, the worst was that three people, two adults and a girl, were killed by toxic waste. That was very hard. Everybody, everybody was sick. The district of Dokui is home to 10,000 people and their doctor, Jean-Louis Louya. The community, the neighbors, saw tankers here and people dumped the toxic waste here in this lake. There were people coughing everywhere. People came for consultations and they all had the same symptoms. 
the same problems affecting the ear, nose, and throat area, and we realized something must have happened. As Abidjan sickened, the scandal forced the collapse of the government, but the investigation pointed the finger at Trafigura. Trafigura is a company that puts the multi into multinational. It has bases throughout the world, including London, Amsterdam and New York. Its turnover, last year $70 billion, dwarfs the entire GDP of the Ivory Coast. So why did its waste end up here, a country that in 2006 was struggling to recover from a civil war? 3,000 miles away in Amsterdam, Greenpeace have been tracking Trafigura's operations. OK. Marietta Hayono says the problem began when Trafigura bought some low-grade oil, known as coconaptha. They tried to clean it up on the cheap to maximize profits. They picked up the coconut from Texas. Yeah. They brought it all over to Las Quira, Tunisia. Oh, to Tunisia. They were kicked out of the country, so they decided to bring it onto a ship, the Probo Koala, just outside Gibraltar. For three months, the Probo Koala was turned into a chemical factory. They used the Probo Koala as a rough and ready refinery off the coast of Gibraltar. The problem was that the oil had too much sulfur in it, so Trafigura tried to remove it using a very unsophisticated method. They poured tons of caustic soda and a catalyst into the crude oil. About half of the sulphur settled out at the bottom. They could now sell the oil, but they were left with a toxic sulphurous sludge in the tanks. After three months, they sailed up to Amsterdam to discharge the slops, the toxic waste. With her hold full of a thick sulfurous tar, the Probo Koala came here to Amsterdam. And this is where the story should have ended. They told the Dutch authorities that what they had on board was ordinary ship slops, a standard wash water that can be safely got rid of for a few thousand euros. But when it was pumped on shore, the appalling fumes triggered an emergency. The Dutch took a closer look and discovered there was nothing ordinary about it. They told Trafigura the waste would cost half a million euros to treat. At this point, the company decided to find a cheaper option. The waste was pumped back on board and Proba Koala set a new course, one that would lead to West Africa. Now Trafigura is being prosecuted.